This time I'm taking a look at the droves and droves of minigames that JRPGs try to shove down our throats. Some good, most bad. But instead of a top 10 or top 5, I figured I should count down the top 5 and worst 5 JRPG minigames. I just want to warn you there's a lot of Final Fantasy representation in this video, mainly because they really do have the best and worst minigames of all time. I'm also not including any fishing minigames because I'll be doing a separate video for those later. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. Number 5 Don't get me wrong, I love Chrono Trigger, but every time I play it, I fucking dread this bullshit race against Johnny. The fact that you're both just whipping back and forth the entire race, and the only really part that matters at all is getting some sort of boost at the end of the race, has just always pissed me off. Like, what was the point of this? Give me a regular race with turns and shit, not whatever the heck this was supposed to be. I get it, you can strategically keep in front of him so he crashes into your back end the entire race, but I've never found this race enjoyable, it's just a tiny skid mark on this great JRPG, so it deserves its spot on the list. Number 5 Coming in at number 5 for the best JRPG minigames are the Gummy Ship segments in Kingdom Hearts 2. I absolutely love these. You can customize your Gummy Ship however you like, then just go out and haul ass. As a big fan of games like Afterburner, I've always had a good time during these segments. They did an amazing job of breaking up the gameplay in Kingdom Hearts 2, and were just so well done and entertaining. Number 4 Speaking of Kingdom Hearts, what the actual fuck is this? Atlantica in Kingdom Hearts 2 was like if they took the shittiest DDR game and injected it with 12,000 gallons of cringe. Please, no more! Make it stop! See you, Number 4 I think I've mentioned it before, but one of my favorite things to do in JRPGs is exploring the massive worlds they take place in. So it's no wonder I love Chocobo Hot and Cold so much. In Chocobo Hot and Cold, you dig for items and chocographs, which are photos from around the world. You then find the locations in those photos and are able to dig up some extremely rare treasure. This minigame is so much fun and is constantly evolving with you as the game progresses. It's one of my favorite minigames of all time from one of my favorite games of all time. I really wanted to put this one higher on the list, but the next three games are just more addicting, and I've spent so much more time playing them. Number 3 I'm including two shitty minigames from Xenogears here because they're both so short yet unenjoyable. The Men of the Sea card game is a shitty card game that's like a weird shitty version of Uno or Crazy 8s. There's no joy gained from playing it, and the controls are so overly complicated that it is practically unplayable. The second shitty minigame in Xenogears is the battling fights. These are mech on mech battles with the absolute worst controls possible in a video game. I found that if you basically just mash buttons or shoot the shit out of your opponent while they're trying to get up, you'll almost always win. But watch out, because if they do this to you, you're screwed. Both of these games feel like they were quickly slapped together, much like Xenogears itself. The absolute worst part is that you have to win the battling tournament, or you're unable to progress the damn game. Number 3 This one's going to split you guys right down the middle. I don't know why, but it seems you either love or hate Blitzball. I personally love it. It's basically underwater soccer, but it's so fun and so addicting. I legit go back and play Final Fantasy X just to get in a few games of Blitzball, then turn it off. There are also some sweet rewards you can get from winning tournaments, making Blitzball actually mean something in the game. It also happens to be a part of the main story and world of Final Fantasy X, so it's a minigame that doesn't feel forced like most JRPG minigames do. For all these reasons and more, Blitzball earns its spot at number 3. Number 2 
After Final Fantasy VIII's success with Triple Triad, the folks at Square decided to do something similar in Final Fantasy IX. The only difference being that in Tetramaster, all the cards have set magic and physical attack and defense stats, and that a good chunk of this shithole of a card game is going to be RNG based. You can have all the best cards in the game, but if RNGs isn't on your side, you can still get your ass beat and lose a rare card. I don't know who thought it would be a good idea to take such a great card game and fuck it up this terribly, but whoever it is can... Go fuck yourself. Number 2! I absolutely love Triple Triad. Tons of people complain about the draw and junction systems in Final Fantasy VIII, but if you just get good at Triple Triad and get card mod, you'll never have to draw again. This is the best card game minigame of all time, and if you find it too easy, you can always spread some crazy ass rules around the world, like some terrible STD. Triple Triad involves strategy, and when you win, you gain new cards, all of which can be refined into materials, which can also be refined into magic. There's even a fairly large side quest dedicated solely to this minigame. For being easy to understand and tough to master, while also contributing to the strength and abilities of your characters, Triple Triad locks in its place as the number two best JRPG minigame. Number one. Oh. Oh. At number one is the game you don't even want people to hear you playing. This game tops everything when it comes to both shittiness and cringe. Massaging LeBlanc is so incredibly embarrassing to play, and it's mandatory to progress through the game. The only minigame that's probably shittier would be the Jump Rope game from Final Fantasy IX, but it's way too simple to put on this list, and at least with Jump Rope you don't want to crawl into a hole and die while playing it. LeBlanc Massage is sort of like Minesweeper, where you have to straddle LeBlanc and press on parts of her back to give her pleasure. The quicker you find her sweet spot, the more she moans, and the higher her satisfaction goes up. For being so embarrassing to play while also being a mandatory part of the game, LeBlanc Massage deserves its spot as the worst JRPG minigame of all time. It's good. When did you get so good at this? Uh, um, I, I don't know. Number one. And the best JRPG minigame goes to none other than Pachisi in Dragon Quest 3. Pachisi is a board game where you can find treasure, boost your stats, gain gold, and get wrecked by monsters. This game is so fun and so significant because the treasure you can get while playing it is super rare and helpful. The thrill and terror you feel each time you roll the die is like nothing else in this video. Some squares will permanently affect your stats either for better or worse. Make sure you save your game before each attempt at Pachisi or you might regret it. There are five different tracks, all with different treasures and traps, and they even brought back the game in the DS remake of Dragon Quest V under the name Treasures and Trapdoors, or TNT. I absolutely love this minigame and hope they add it to the next main or spin-off Dragon Quest game. They kind of had it in Dragon Quest Builders as a craftable decoration, but you weren't able to actually play the game. The only real downside here is that Pachisi is only in the Game Boy Color and Super Famicom remakes of Dragon Quest 3. For some reason they didn't include it in the mobile and Switch versions of the game, which sucks copious amounts of ass. For honorable mentions, I'd like to bring up Sveta, the unique golf game in Dark Cloud 2, and of course, Insectron from Rogue Galaxy, which is like Pokemon crossed with chess. Dishonorable mentions would have to go to most of Final Fantasy VII's minigames, like that shitty fighting game at the Gold Saucer, as well as Mog House and the Fort Condor minigame. The Gold Saucer games I mentioned aren't on the list because of how basic and simple they are, and Fort Condor's minigame wasn't quite shitty enough to make the top 5. Of course, there's also the shitty jump rope game from Final Fantasy IX that I mentioned earlier, and last but not least, that shitty Berry Blender minigame from the Gen 3 Pokemon games. I hated this minigame so much, and it's just one of many reasons why Gen 3 will always be my least favorite generation of the Pokemon games, despite how much I enjoyed the remakes. And how could I forget that shitty musical minigame in Breath of Fire 2? Thanks for watching everyone, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, where I'm live at least three nights a week at twitch.tv slash 3
I'm currently playing through Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Symphony of the Night on Sunday mornings. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a fantastic rest of your day. Mm-hmm.